Now let me give you a brief explanation about how I went about creating this uh, animation. And I am using, uh, as you can see here, Blender 3.6 for this just because the only reason why I'm using 3.6 and not 4 something is because the uh, Molecular Plus works better in 3.6. Don't know why. Alright, <clears throat> now Essentially, all I did was, um, the first thing I did was create one of these cups. And, of course, I just kind of put it off to the side. Then I created this uh, container, which, that's self-explanatory. That's just to keep the particles from going all over the place, for the most part. Then I created this faucet. Now, this faucet... It's not really a faucet. It's just a pipe that was made with using a curve and then converting that curve into a pipe. And inside this pipe, I have emitters. Let me put this in wireframe. Go in side view and orthographic view. Now if I was to, because I have these right down here, they're called pipe emitters. 
I have the emitter right here and of course the pipe is also a collision object just like everything else in the scene. So I'm just controlling when these individual emitters come on through keyframes. It's not really through keyframes but through uh, uh, the frame start and end point. Now the biggest things in this scene which are keyframes that are keyframed is of course the turntable which you can see all the little keyframes I have down here and then these force fields now the force fields are rather complicated if you haven't done it a few times because like what makes it more complicated is because I'm I want some of the force fields to control certain color particles and I'm doing that by creating collections and like with this like say with force field one I have a collection called group force one and with the pipe emitter it's also in group force one because and then in the actual emitter settings I come down here to the uh, uh, field weights and the then the effector collection I got group force one so basically I'm telling the physics engine that the force field that this specific force field that's uh, selected now is only going to affect particles from this specific emitter now the more complicated one it, you know, I, whenever I first started trying to figure out how to go about doing this, I wanted, it wasn't in this project, it was several projects back, a few years back. I wanted one force field to affect all the particles, while I wanted individual force fields to only affect certain particles. And it took me a while to figure out back then that the way to go about that is like this case the force all which is the one that affects all the particles I had to add it literally to every gr group it's I thought that just having the collection up here because everything is in collection but that's just the main collection that's right here and it doesn't work you have to actually manually add uh, in this case this force field to every one of them it makes sense now but back then it just didn't quite make sense and of course, um, you know, everything's kind of keyframed. I had to, had to bake it, you know, several times to get it just right. But whenever I'm baking it, doing test bakes, I set the number of particles way lower than I'm doing here. Like in this case, each um, cup initially, or each emitter, creates 10,000 particles so each cup gets 10,000 particles so you're talking eight cups that's 80,000 particles and whenever I was doing test runs to get the timing and stuff like that correct I was uh, using like a thousand particles um, yeah it was a thousand I believe because my computer could um, do that in pretty much real time and I would set the I would set the um, sub steps to like one. That way, for every two frames of simulation, there would be um, one frame of bake, if that makes any sense. And that would be enough to ensure that I got the timings and keyframes right on everything before actually baking it for several hours with the full number of particles. But animations like this I kind of like because the whole idea of having some particles work with some force fields and some force fields control all the particles, it creates a dynamic um, aspect to the scene that I think is visually appealing. And then like in this case right here, I think 
where it's just sucking up the particles one color after another I think that's just kind of neat when you're looking at it but anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed the animation if you have any questions about how I went about doing this um, let me know and I'll try to explain it better I probably won't do a tutorial on something this complicated because it just becomes extremely long but I'll be glad to try to help you uh, in the comments to understand this if you have a question about it it's actually it's not that difficult it's just time-consuming to set it all up but anyway later people